for joining me on My Smart Tech TV. Today I'm joined by Hugo Richard, who's the CEO and co-founder at DizTech. So welcome, Hugo. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for having me and uh, great to be here. Great. Well, tell us a bit about you, Hugo, and your business, DizTech. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, well, I've been working in the startup world for a fair amount of years now, pretty much forever, nearly. Um, and um, yeah, so I've, I've run multiple different startups and, and I've been always fascinated by technology and, and how technology can help us do better things uh, faster. And, and um, so this tech, we, we started this tech actually in 2018. And um, one of the main sort of problem that we wanted to solve um, was uh, being able to sort of assess um, reading difficulty and, 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 you know, dyslexia and, and all that sort of thing. And one of the things that I believe personally from a personal basis is, you know, literacy, reading, being able to read is the most critical skills you, you can ever have. Like, you know, if you can't read, how do you, you know, uh, commute? How do you order food? Um, how do you make informed buying decision? How do you study? Like, so reading is critical, right? In today's society. And so we wanted to sort of work in that space and, and, and potentially, you know, empower people with technology to, to support children who struggle with reading uh, more efficiently, I would say. So that's, that's, that's us in a nutshell. Um, and, you know, most of the technology that we have is, is based on AI. Uh, so we're an AI company. We've, we've been, you know, collecting a lot of data from a lot of different people around the world. And, and we're trying to build those amazing technology that assess reading and, and assess and screen for dyslexia. Great. And talk me through more the process of how the program works, just from sort of how it, how it kind of changes um, and improves people with, with dyslexia. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. So dyslexia is, a, is, a, is what we call a learning disorder. Uh, we like to call it learning differences uh, because, you know, it's just, you know, sometimes it's nice to have positive word and just disorder is pretty bad. So we call it learning yeah. difference. <laughs> but um, basically, it's, it's the world most common learning difference uh, and it impacts the ability of learning how to read so uh, i'm dyslexic uh, and and what happened when you're dyslexic is that you, you need to be taught in a slightly different way um how to read um and you know it's, it's quite hard for us to be able to sort of read and you know we're much slower reader and all that sort of thing so um one of the big uh solution for you know supporting someone with dyslexia is actually there's two uh, things that needs to happen in sequentially the first is that we need to be able to assess the individual with the reading struggle and we need to be able to have a holistic understanding of their reading performance um, if you think about reading it's actually super complicated your brain is actually doing a, a, a large array of different things such as you know when you read a word house for example you need to be able to recognize that H is H, you need to be able to associate the sound of the letter, then you need to be able to, you know, there's all sorts of different things that your brain is doing. And so in order for us to support struggling reader, we actually need to understand where um, there is a gap so that we can start here. Um, and the way currently, uh, you know, the way we currently assess reading performance is been around for you know 50 odd years and generally speaking you have highly educated uh, literacy professional who run a battery of different paper-based tests uh, reading tests that takes a fair amount of time to administer there's a lot of manual scoring going on so for example when we have um when we run a, a reading test we can see for example the number of word read per minute uh, and then we have a score and we have to take that score, compare it to normative data. It's a, it's a fair amount of work and it's quite expensive and it's quite time, time consuming. And so what we've been able to do is to build a technology that um, is basically a, a, an online reading exercise where you have a, a student that read word aloud on the screen. We're able to record their voice and we've been able to actually uh, dynamically score and measure multiple aspects of reading. So what that means is that instead of roughly spending two hours of traditional paper-based assessment, we've been able to sort of combine all of this into a, a 10 minutes online uh, reading yeah. test. It's a lot of time saved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So more, more, you know, less time assessing, more time supporting. Um, and then obviously the, we're just at the start of what's possible. Um, so, you know, we have a very long roadmap and there's a lot of exciting things that we can do. But ideally, you know, the, the main problem that we want to solve is 
reducing the barrier of access to be able to assess reading difficulty. Right now, you have to be certified, you have to be highly educated and understand the science of reading. Um, what we want to do is to lower that barrier down and say, hey, you know, even if you're just a, a simple teacher who do not necessarily have the deep knowledge of reading, you can still, you know, do the 10 minute um, reading exercise and, and assess key aspects of reading and see whether a child, you know, potentially needs support. Yeah. And I guess being more affordable. I mean, are there some kids out there that don't get detected if they're from underprivileged families? Or yeah. Yeah. That would... And and um, I suppose as well, um, you know, not only are you saving time and time obviously um, would have quite an emotional impact on the child as well. If they're going through all these assessments mm -hmm. and it's quite, quite time consuming, that's yeah, it kind of. And have you, have you got any like success stories that you've um, heard personally from this platform that you can share today or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, you know, we've helped thousands of people so far. We've uh, so right now we we do have a dyslexia screening that's available online, where um, we simply provide a likelihood of uh, the student being dyslexic, um, and if the likelihood is high, um, we have what we call a support uh, a support letter, which basically is a well drafted letter that a parent can take as well as the result and go to their school and start engaging with the school. You know, it's not a matter of saying, yes, the child is dyslexic. It's more of a leverage for the family to be able to start engaging and start conversation with the school saying, hey, you know, the child, my, my child is struggling. We did a screening. This is the result. Um, is there some things that we can put in place? So, you know, that's, we've, we've helped, you know, over 4,500 plus people already with this. But what we're working on right now is a much more uh, comprehensive platform where not only we can assess the likelihood of dyslexia, but we can assess um, very precise aspects of reading, things like phonetic decoding fluency, sight word fluency. And, and those things are actually not aimed for parent or individual. They're actually aimed for the literacy professional who are out there assessing kids and supporting them. So we're actually, like you said, saving them a very valuable time in terms of being able to assess, um, uh, you know, the child and, and allowing them to, to put in place proper support. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, look, there's so many success stories. We're actually in the process of sort of wanting to record a, a very big case study and, and have those people on camera and, and potentially, you know, share that story. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really amazing to be able to see all the, you know, all the, the positive that's been happening uh, since we launched. Mm -hmm. And are you guys mainly in Australia? Is it global at the moment? Where's your predominant sort of base? Yeah, sure. So we're definitely in Australia. Um, most of the resources and, and, and focus that we have from a, from a business perspective is, is aimed towards Australia, certainly. That's where we want to help first because that's where we are. Uh, however, we, we do have some people um, pretty much all around the world who have reached out to us, which we've potential, you know, um, commercial opportunity and, all that sort of thing. So we, we do have some finger in the US, we have some people in the UK, New Zealand, Singapore. Um, so it's, it's been really amazing to see this whole community being interested into that technology and, and reaching out. But mainly, we really focus on Australia, but we don't say no to, to overseas opportunity, obviously. So, so yeah, Australia is first. And then, you know, we'll see how that goes moving forward. And I guess that leads on to my kind of last question, what's in the future for you guys? What have you guys got um, kind of planned? Yeah, sure. Well, one of the main uh, one of the main technological challenges that we've had while you know while developing the technology, uh, you know, for the first three years of of the company, the main resources were spent on research and development. So uh, because what we're doing is actually completely new, and we actually didn't know if from a science perspective it could work. And so we've been heavily working towards you know uh, that sort of. R&D and you know we've been able to publish some peer-reviewed scientific publication about the work that we've done in AI and, and machine learning and for us right now um, we've learned a lot along the way and it's clear to us that technology is going to be the next big thing in regards to literacy um, you know if you look at voice and AI right now you have, you know, speech to text, you can talk to Siri, all that sort of thing. All those things are already out there. What we're doing is the next level under, um, which is how do we actually take that speech and really pinpoint some very minute details that will allow uh, someone who's expert in teaching how to read to, to really understand, okay, those are the things that are 
um, struggling. So where that leads us is that, you know, right now the technology is available for any English speaking country, regardless of accent. And, and you know, accent was a big technological challenge for us. We knew that if, if everything we were doing was reliable on accent, we couldn't grow. It was be, would be very hard for us to scale. So because we've been able to engineer and innovate um, and, and build what we've building, what we've built without relying on accent. You know, we can go to any English speaking country right now and the technology would be as accurate as, you know, in Australia. So, you know, in the future, um, we, we think that we, we definitely have the potential to become uh, the next big assessment technology for literacy all around the world. Um, so that's really where we're aiming to, to be. Um, and, you know, I, th I think that we've, we've had major interest from from very large organization and you know those conversations take a long time but i think as soon as the the technology is being used more and more it would become obvious to the population that you know this is actually extremely reliable extremely fast extremely cheap uh you know we had people in the us paying up to six thousand us dollar for for a simple dyslexia diagnosis mm -hmm. um you know so in terms of price and time and positive impact uh, it's it's kind of a revolution. So yeah, it's it's definitely something that's worldwide and, glo and global. And the solution that we have is highly highly scalable as well. So that's definitely the plan for the future for us. Awesome. And now you mentioned there that you did that the research and and publications. Where can people find that? Is that publicly available? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We we uh, we're very very transparent. Sort of the culture that we have is so everything is on our website. Uh, we got a, a specific page that explains our research, and we know that sometimes you know science can be quite complicated. If you know, and so we've tried to break it down. So on the website, we actually have some simple explanation about sort of how it works on the high level details. We also have a, a simple video for people to watch. But if you know people want to have the nitty gritty and, and details about what we what we've done they they there's link to to the publication that they can go through and, and read so yeah everything is accessible on the website it's great we'll link to that in the show notes and yeah thank you so much for your time it sounds incredible and it's going to make a real difference to to those um who yeah have dyslexia so amazing can't wait to see what you guys do so thanks for joining me and i appreciate your time today hugo amazing thank you so much for having uh -huh. me jesse it was great being here